Hi, this is Step School, the second part of the Common Filter course. Last time we uh, covered probability, the Gaussian distribution, and one-dimensional Common Filter. The next step is to generalize these ideas, these concepts to multidimensional systems. And the first step toward that is to study the state space representation. If we have any system, it can be a robot, a vehicle, or even a factory, it is important to model it because a modeling system allows us to uh, test the system before actually building it. So if we have a robot and if we have a, if we have a model of it, we can check whether it can work, whether it is stable and run uh, other uh, numerous experiments before designing the robot itself. So it saves uh, our time uh, and energy. In robotics and robotics related fields, we use a state space representation to model the system. Uh, and for that purpose, let's consider this example. So we have this box illustrating our system and we have inputs and we use U letter to denote them and we have measured variables and we use Y letter to denote them. In addition, we have state variables to fully characterize the system because using just inputs and outputs, you cannot fully define the system. So let me provide you with uh, an example. If we have a quadcopter, the, the inputs to the system would be the, the voltage applied to, to all motors. The, the measured variables would be um, acceleration, the gyroscope values, maximum to measure, and the, the, the GPS, for example. And the state variables would be tilt angles, the, the velocity, the position of the quadcopter, and or even a battery level. So here we have x, u, and y, and they are vectors. They're not just one-dimensional uh, variables. So the first equation in state space representation is x dot, the derivative of uh, state variables equals ax plus bu. And here a and b are matrices. The meaning of this equation is to show how state variables and inputs affect the dynamics uh, of the system, how, this, uh, how the uh, state variables will evolve in the future. The second, in the second equation, we have y equal, which is the measured variables equals cx plus du. So this matrix D is usually zero. So we have this C matrix that shows the relation between the measured variables and state variables. So let me provide you with an example. So here we have this simple vehicle, we apply the force and it starts moving. So the input to this system would be just a force, just a one variable. And as state variables, we have the position and x dot, which is the, uh, the velocity of the, of the vehicle. Uh, because uh, if we know the position and the velocity, we can fully uh, define the dynamics of the vehicle. And as measured variables, uh, let's say we just measure the position. Um, the next uh, step is to uh, use the Newton law to show the relation between the force and acceleration. So force equals um, acceleration multiplied by M and plus we have uh, this uh, friction. So Bx dot. And from this equation, we extract the acceleration. And the next step is to write the state space equation. So uh, we have x and x dot as state variables. And if we take the derivative, we get x dot and x double dot. And x dot among uh, state variables, we already have x dot. So the first row of this matrix would be 0, 1. And f doesn't affect the, the velocity directly. So we have 0 here. And for x double dot, we just use this expression and we insert the corresponding gains. And for measured variables, we just measure the position. So we have one zero. So finally, we obtained the state space equations. So this is A matrix, this is B, this is C and D. And let me provide you with another example. 
Uh, right now I'm working on designing the balancing robot, not just designing, but provide uh, a full, uh, complete um, uh, guidance, how to design the system, how to design the controller, and how to implement this controller using the microcontroller. So here we have this illustration of the balancing robot, and here I define all state variables, inputs, and measured variables. Then I, I use um, uh, Newton laws and other fundamental laws to, to, to define the dynamics. Then using these equations, I finally uh, extract the state space equations. Then using these state space equations, I can um, design the controller uh, without using the, the balancing robot. So before actually designing the, the system, I can model the system and I, I can use this model to design the controller. And I can run many tests before, before, uh, before making the, the robot itself. However, these equations are useless when working with a microcontroller or any other digital system because these equations are in continuous form. Instead, we have to have discrete equations, a recursive a relation between the variables. So to extract the discrete form of these equations, I have to show the general solution of uh, this uh, state space equation. So if you encountering this equation a first time, don't be afraid. What this equation means is basically if we know the initial values x t zero, and if we know the inputs, and actually we know the inputs because we can we can control them, we can um, identify the state variables to any time instance. Uh, however, this uh, concept, this expression, exponential form matrix, might seem uh, very complicated and ridiculous because the, the power of the exponential is a matrix. And don't be afraid of this expression because we can use this uh, time series to, to compute it. And if you need more information, you can use um, this document, um, 90 dubious ways to compute the exponential informatics, which provides uh, really complete uh, information about this concept. So it's uh, this document is in open access, so you can just Google this name and you're gonna definitely find this document. Um, so using this uh, general solution, we can extract the discrete form of this uh, equation. So instead of uh, t0, we uh, substitute the, the state variables for the previous, uh, for the last time frame, t k, k minus one, and we assume that input is constant in this uh, time uh, range, which is true when working in digital systems. So using uh, these uh, assumptions, we can uh, extract the digital form of this equation. So we, um, we denote this expression as f matrix, as you see, and this expression is equal to a g matrix. So finally, we obtain the discrete, the recursive form uh, of the state space equations, so we can implement these equations inside of the microcontroller or any other digital system. And also when working with MATLAB or any other software tools, we don't need to manually compute f and g. There are already functions that do this job. So next, I wanna show how to model the system in MATLAB. So we have the mass of the vehicle, the friction coefficient, and the time period. So our, our system is gonna work at 100 Hertz. Then we have the matrices A, B, C, D, and using this matrix, matrices I define the system. Also, we have uh, the digital form of the system, and I uh, computed it using this C to D function. Then um, I want to show how the position of the of the vehicle is going to evolve if we apply some impulse force. So if we exert just the force uh, at the beginning, then we're going to see how the the, the vehicle uh, will, will move. So if I run this code, we got this um, um, this waveform as the position. So the, the uh, 
the vehicle is going to move and at some point it will stop moving. Or instead we're going to use a step function where we apply, where we model uh, when uh, exerting the constant a force continuously. So it's not just a pulse, instead it's uh, just a continuous uh, constant force. So if I run this code, we're gonna get this uh, figure. So what this equation means is that the, the vehicle is gonna continue moving because we constantly applying some force. Also, instead of step, I'm gonna insert impulse again. And also I'm going to increase the time period. So let me set 0.5 second and run this code. So here we have the continuous, uh, the out outcome of the continuous uh, st space, state space representation and we have the discrete form. So uh, the discrete form uh, follows uh, the, the continuous form pretty well. Uh, also, if we just uh, print the digital system, so this is, so here we have A and B matrices, which are these F and G matrices. So uh, MATLAB automatically that computes uh, exponential of a matrix. So finally, there are three things uh, to, uh, to point out. The first thing is that not all systems can be uh, implemented in this uh, linear state space uh, form because we have here the linear correspondence between the, the variables. However, if we have nonlinear dynamics, for example, x dot equals cosine x, you cannot uh, extract um, matrices to compute to show the relation between between the state variables uh, in that case you can uh, linearize the system around the static point or you can use other methods to uh, to model a nonlinear system and the second thing is that um, state space uh, design is is a is a big topic and a lot of things you can learn from from that and Personally, I would, I would recommend this book, Feedback Control of Dynamic Systems, which provides uh, very exhaustive information about the state space design, but it's not so mass heavy. In addition, you can join to my Patreon page and the community page on my website, where I provide additional materials, including um, the, the about the state space, um, uh, state space uh, representation. And finally, the modeling is not perfect because we first we have some external forces that we cannot control. And the, the second, the modeling itself is not perfect. That's why in the next video, we're going to cover multivariate random variables to quantify the uncertainty level in state uh, variables. So uh, please subscribe not to miss uh, new videos and please press the like button. So see you in the next video.